Hey guys, uh, welcome to the very first installment of Feast or Famine Cooking. Uh, my name is Noah. I uh, want to go ahead and let you guys know that just right off the bat, this isn't going to be a cooking video. We are doing a top 10 things that you should have in your kitchen for investing, building up your kitchen, trying to find special items that will allow you to do the biggest array of cooking while in the kitchen, while giving you the best quality possible. Um, I want to go ahead and also say that I don't have any culinary training. Uh, I'm not a cooking school grad. I'm not any of those things. Uh, over the past, man, 20 years, I've been watching a lot of Food Network videos and piece by piece, I've been teaching myself how to do cooking, my knife skills, and I've come a long way. So I wanted to turn around and kind of share that with a lot of people. I have come across a lot of people lately that when they see stuff that I cook, they'll comment on a picture and then they'll look at me and say, I've never been able to cook like that. I can't cook. I refuse to cook. Everything comes out burnt. The key behind that is thinking that me, myself, I've ruined so many recipes in the kitchen that I can't begin to tell you how many have messed up. But it's failing to get success. Uh, as you start to sit and cook, I've learned how to manage a lot of different items in the kitchen and my recipes have been coming out phenomenally lately. Um, if you sit down and actually think about what you're going to cook, you can make anything happen. Nothing is that difficult in a kitchen. There is techniques that are far superior to anything that I can do in a kitchen, but I always like pushing myself because I like to learn. So as I mentioned tonight, we're not going to do any cooking, um, but we are going to get in the kitchen here in a few moments. We're going to sit down. We are going to learn what items... I truly believe in. Um, I am not sponsored by anything that you will see in the kitchen by any of the companies. This is just me, what I have in my kitchen, and I don't want you to think we're in some big house. Uh, we are in an apartment. Uh, I have a two bedroom, one bathroom apartment, and we are going to sit down and show you that you can have stuff like this in your kitchen. Yes, I have zero room left in my kitchen because I have so many tools, but I'm getting ready to move into a house, so I wanted to do a bunch of these films here so you can see that everything can be done here. You don't need to be in a big five-star kitchen with a huge vent hood and gas ranges. Do I want all those things? Absolutely, I want all those things. But I definitely want to show you that it's plausible and definitely feasible to do these in your own kitchen. So I'm going to take a few moments here and I'm going to get into the kitchen. Uh, I'm going to get the top 10 items together for you guys, and then as we go on from time to time, we are going to sit down and go through this one. The next video will be knife skills, and then we're finally going to get into the kitchen and start doing some cooking. So in a few moments, I'll see you guys in the kitchen. All right, guys, so we're finally in the kitchen. You're going to see that as I move around, my kitchen is extremely small. Uh, it's only the 4 I stove. It is an electric stove. As I mentioned earlier, I would pray for gas, which I'm going to have in the new house. Um, the equipment is all just stuff that's been here for quite a long time in the apartment complex. So without anything else said, we're just gonna get into it. We're gonna start our top 10 list. Uh, we are gonna start at number 10. Number 10 is a food processor. Um, when I get into this food processor, I'm gonna show you here in a moment, I have spent a lot of money on my food processor. Uh, I brought bought a Breville 16 cup, uh, Peel and Dice, this thing is phenomenal. It does all the work I could ever ask it to do. It has a huge cylinder to it. It also has the mini chopper inside. I can peel, I can dice. You can buy a cheaper version, but as I'm gonna mention a lot of these things, I did invest a lot of money in a lot of my equipment. The reason behind that is, is I'm a firm believer in you get what you pay for. And if you're going to invest in your kitchen, if you can afford to do it, save up and just buy the best of whatever it is. I've bought pretty high-end quality of most of the stuff that I use in my kitchen. The reason is I don't want to buy something for $50 and then turn around, you know, six months later, have it die on me and then need to go buy a $250, $300 machine, even $500 I can spend on this food processor. But you just want to invest in stuff that's going to be good. It's going to last you. And, and some of these, when I get into the knives and stuff, you're going to see that once I bought these once, I'm not going to have to buy them again. I take care of them, I sharpen them, I keep them honed, and I'm going to have them for life. So, number 10, uh, we do have, which we're going to show you here, this is our Breville Food Peel and Dice. Uh, this is the sous chef. This is a 13-cup model. This has 
more power than I'll ever need. I mean, it can do jobs in 20 seconds. It'll peel upwards of six to seven whole potatoes in 20 to 25 seconds. Um, there is a video that I already have filmed, so you will see this coming out shortly. This machine is phenomenal. Uh, Breville always puts out a great product. It always looks good. And once I get it into my new kitchen, it's gonna be wonderful. The only downside of this is it is gonna take up room in your kitchen. But you can do everything from salsas, pica de gallos, you can make um, fresh bread, rolls, you can make sauces, you can make dressings. Everything that you would wanna do, you can be done in this machine. I do have a stand mixer and I do still have that on my top 10 list, but if you have to settle on one, you can get this and this can be a multi-facet tool. So it's one of those things that once you invest in one, you buy a really good quality one, you're not messing around. This thing has been phenomenal since the day I bought it. I would recommend Breville to anybody. Uh, this is probably my go-to for a lot of my kitchen equipment. There's not anything else in the market that I've fallen in love with as much as most of the Breville products. So we are going to move on. Uh, we are going to go to number nine on our list. Nine is a very simple one. Uh, nine is actually a crock pot. Um, I have one of these set out here. Uh, I got this one from Kohl's. Uh, I like it because it does have a warmer setting on it. Uh, it will set everything to it. It's got the lock clamps down, so when you actually go to sit down, you can clamp this down. It seals on tight. You're not gonna mess around with this. Uh, crock pots, the reason I have this at number nine on my list is anybody who has children, anybody who works a big time job, you're gonna get into your kitchen and you're gonna be so tired some days. You can get up really early in the morning, throw a roast, throw a lamb roast, throw hot dogs, kielbasa, anything you wanna do in this, this can be done. Now this was an original set, this was, I bought right before Instapot started becoming very popular. Instapot works very much the same way. Uh, if I ever decide that I wanna get an Instapot, even though it's a pressure cooker, it still does 99% of the capabilities that a traditional crock pot will do. This is just great for all those families. You put this in at 7 a.m., put it on low, let it go for 10 to 12 hours. By the time you come home at night, you can have roast, potatoes, carrots. You could do desserts. You can do appetizers, buffalo chicken dip. There's so many things you can do in these, and they're so cheap. I think I spent under 50 bucks on this one, because again, this was an older school one. A lot of the places I've seen, uh, you can go to places, like I'm very blessed to live right by a Williams-Sonoma outlet. I get crazy deals there all the time. So a lot of stuff you see in my kitchen, I've not quite paid full price for because I've learned that I can turn around and save a whole lot of money by going to these outlet stores. I do have a Sir La Table right by me, which I do love a lot of those. And if you just heard the little click, I made homemade spaghetti sauce today. So the uh, jars are already canning. So you'll, hear, you'll feel, or actually you'll hear a few of the little pops throughout this video. But yes, yeah, so number nine easily is a crock pot on my list. This will just be a multi-tool that as a family, as a single person, if you don't wanna cook and you know you're gonna be at work late, invest in one of these. There's just too many things you can do with these without actually ruining your dinners. So we are going to move on to number eight now. Uh, number eight is my stand mixer. These are not cheap. There's no way around it. KitchenAid is by far the best quality brand I've ever bought for a stand mixer. I've had a few handheld ones. I've had one other short one that it was a stand mixer, but it was just trash. But this one is phenomenal. This is a seven cup pro line or a seven quart. I'm sorry. So this is the big Mac daddy. This is not the tilt head that you will find in a lot of your kitchenware. The biggest thing is when you start getting into these, I suggest for a lot of people not get the pro line like I have. This is the high end uh, commercial grade version. If I was getting one, I would probably tell you to get the six quart with a tilt head. The reason behind that is, is it is a little bit cheaper. Uh, Costco has had the six quart tilt heads for like 219 recently. And it comes with the plastic spatulas, the bowl. But KitchenAid doesn't have a whole lot of equipment that's aftermarket for the Proline series. So these are the seven quarts. When you get the six quart tilt heads, they have the ice cream bowl, they have the tempered chocolate bowl, uh, they have the glass bowl that you can see, and there's a lot of them there that can film you and put you in to where you want to be. But this thing is phenomenal. You make desserts, cakes, doughs, it's got dough hooks. It has a bunch of different attachments. I actually, I'll actually have her show you this. If you look up here, I have no room in this kitchen. But up here, I have 
the shredder, which I can do cheeses and do all those with. I've got the uh, pasta and the meat grinders. I have a lot of those. I can make a pasta maker. I can do the meat grinders. I can do a lot of those things up here through KitchenAid. Um, those are attachments that actually go to the front here. Uh, when you see these, they come onto the front. This becomes a huge multi-tool because now I can do all my shredding. I can do all my meat grinding, especially if you're not somebody who wants to do a lot of meat grinding. You're somebody who wants to invest in just something small that can do a little bit of meat at a time. That's where this thing is phenomenal. So without a doubt, I would always suggest, say to suggest in buying in one of those. A six quart is going to do everything you could ever need in a kitchen. The seven quart is just me wanting to get the biggest, baddest of whatever I was buying at the time. And this was one of the first investments that happened in my kitchen. I was actually gifted this one, and this one was easily the thing that set me off to building my kitchen. So, always thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Beasley. That's a shout out to you guys, because I know that was the best Christmas gift I think I've ever gotten. So, uh, moving on to number seven. Getting yourself a good blender is never a bad idea. Uh, Vitamix easily puts out the best product. Um, I know a lot of people now are doing Ninja Blenders, things of that nature, but I did a lot of research. Um, I went ahead and bought a very high-end uh, Vitamix. It's crazy powerful. The blender bowl on it itself, huge capacity. I'm not having to mess with it. It has an auto cleaning function on it. Uh, if you get in, it actually does all the mechanical buttons. So if I turn, go to turn it on, which do I, oh, it might help if I actually plug it in. I'll get the Vitamix in. It's got all the automatic dials. You can change your settings, your temperatures, auto cleans. You can do soups, peanut butters, smoothies. You can put chai seeds and a bunch of other things in here and it is not going to mess around. It'll actually pulverize all your seeds. If you like doing strawberry smoothies and you get tired of having the little seeds in there, this thing will nuke them. It'll get it so smooth and rich that it makes drinking smoothies actually fun. There's a few different models for this one. Um, this again is one of those ones, the reason I bought this was it had a 10 year warranty with it. So if I was gonna turn around and invest, you know, I think I paid a little over 500 for this one. They're between six and 700 market price if you see them on, on the shelves, but you can find deals. I found a great deal on this one and that's why I picked it up because this is their top of the line at the time. But amazing smoothies. I've made potato soup, I have made peanut butter, and if you've never done that, I totally suggest doing that. Uh, maybe in a future video, I'll show you how to do that. There's nothing better than homemade creamy peanut butter. So these have all been kind of the big machines that are in the kitchen. Um, outside of those, those are the, by far the most expensive ones. I'm not gonna go into any more of the equipment. If you got any combination of these four, it's really gonna turn around and give you the opportunity to make just about anything in your kitchen. I mean, smoothies, soups, everything there long, slow cooked, braised meals with your crock pot. You can make doughs, breads, whatever you need to do with your uh, food processor. Same thing with this stand mixer, you're making all your sets, you can make ground meats, you can make pastas. Everything can be done from just these four equipments. So moving on now, we're gonna move into pieces of equipment that are not electronical or electrical <laughs> in your kitchen. So this number six here is a cutting board. Uh, I I love a big, thick wood oak cutting board. Uh, depends on which styles you get. This one I've had for quite a while. It's got some discoloration. It's got markings in it. You can't really feel it, but if you hurt, you're able to hear it, you can feel, see the nicks and the cuts that are in this. I've used this cutting board for a really long time. I do keep try and keep it as long and as neat as possible. I oil it every, I don't know, probably about once a month. Try and keep it clean. Um, I did turn around and invest in... Um, these little flimsy cutting boards. Um, these things are just great for when I'm doing vegetables or if I'm doing stuff that I don't feel like getting this cutting board all messed up for. If I'm cutting a small cut of beef or something, something that I don't want to get all bloody all over my cutting board. I've heard a lot of people uh, in the past say that wood cutting boards are bad because they host bacteria. I went ahead and read a lot of articles on that. It, there's a lot of false information there. The wood seals so much faster on the cuts that the bacteria can't get in there. And at that point, it actually seals it on the outside. So when you hit this with a bleach, when you hit this with an industrial cleaner, a cutting board cleaner, it's killing it all off. So there's no found evidence when you're getting into those. Finding yourself a good cutting board, you can find one at Bed Bath & Beyond, you can find one at a Williams-Sonoma. 
Um, the only thing I don't like about this one, I wish it was just a little bit bigger width wise because I do a lot of briskets, I do a lot of barbecue, stuff of that nature. There is ones that have little drainage trays on the outside. Those are something that I would highly suggest investing in. You still get a huge cutting surface on the front, but as you come around the outside, you are gonna give yourself just a little bit extra space. I'm guessing that's what I wanna call it. It's gonna give you that chance for those juices runoffs. If you allow your meat to rest properly, you're not gonna need a whole lot of it, but when you do a marinade or a juice or you pull a roast and you wanna get it, those drip run trays are huge. Um, it's probably what I'm gonna invest in next. Um, my little brother has made a few cutting boards in his time. He's made some really nice ones. I'm probably going to have him do me a really cool one, get a Feast or Famine logo, burned into it, make it something neat, something you'll be able to see in the kitchen super easy. So number five is one that I think you're going to think is the stupidest thing that I'm going to tell you tonight. But number five, I think, is one of the most important things. Invest in a really good set of measuring spoons, teaspoons. I bought a really good heavy duty set. Now these are not light, like you can hear this. Like these are heavy duty. I'm not messing around with, with cheap ones. Now the reason I did this, go to your local dollar store. Walk in there and look at one of the little cheap dollar plastic ones, the little $4 sets you can get at Bed Bath & Beyond. They're nice, they work for the first couple times but start putting it in really hot water. Leave it in there one night when you're super busy, or if you put it in your dishwasher and they start to warp, they'll start to bend. You'll get little bevels and knocks on the insides of, of your measuring spoons. If you get those little bevels and knocks in here, guess what, your measurements aren't right. The most important thing in baking is precise measurements. So if you have one of these, and these really good ones, these are not bending, these are not breaking, they're not molding, they're not folding. These are gonna turn around and allow you to make whatever you want at an exact measurement. I think that's one of the most important things in a kitchen. It kinda of sounds weird, and I bet you a lot of people won't tell you that that's one of their top 10 things to invest in, but trust me, if you get a good set there, you're never going wrong. Uh, moving on to number four, we're going on to cast iron pans. Uh, cast iron pans are wonderful for a whole lot of different reasons. You can invest uh, $200, you could get yourself a great set of pans. I have a heavy duty pan down here in the bottom. I got a big 12 inch one. I've got a 10 inch. I got my little egg pan that people just like to really laugh at because it's about this big. Um, I invested in one of these. This is great for just doing, it is Lodge. Uh, Lodge is kind of the cheap company on the market. Um, I do want to invest in high end enamel, uh, Dutch oven, stuff of that nature, but these are, products work amazing. This does great for grilled cheese, you want to do French toast, stuff of this nature, or a pan. I've taken this one a lot of different places with me. I also have invested in a griddle that I leave on top of my stove. It has a flat side on this side, and then on the back side, I do have the, uh, the lines. I can do a lot of different markings, grillings. Um, I use this quite a bit when I'm doing, usually I do a lot of breakfast food. Um, if any of you have ever seen the movie Chef, I absolutely love that movie and I found the recipe in the video from the chef show on Netflix. Amazing, amazing way to do a grilled cheese. Um, I've done it for a couple people and they kinda scarf down a four cheese grilled cheese super quickly. But cast iron allows you to sear everything off. It allows you to get a heavy crust. It allows you to do different types of cooking that you can't do on a traditional set of pans. So once you get into cast iron, you still won't will invest in a good set of pans, but cast iron by far the best ones I've ever had. So moving after cast iron is probably the most universal piece of equipment that you're gonna use in your kitchen. Um, I have fallen in love with Dutch ovens. Uh, Dutch ovens are incredible. Uh, these are the ones where I'm gonna invest in La Crusade. I've got a couple of them on the way. Um, this one that I have here now is a five quart from Lodge. You can do everything in this. I smoke beans in this. I do deep frying in these. You're gonna see I have oil in here that I've already been keeping in here. Um, it's gonna get about one more use. These are amazing for deep frying. They're heavy walled. This is pure cast iron, but this is gonna hold that heat. It's gonna allow you to do fried. It's going to, if you get an enameled interior one, it's gonna allow you to do uh, soups. It's going to allow you to do everything that you could ever think in a kitchen while holding and retaining heat. It doesn't allow the bottom of the pans to scorch. Um, these things are high temperature resistant. 
Um, this one, personal one here, I do it on the smoker. I, when I said I make baked beans, I make baked beans with pulled pork and jalapenos and apples and bacon. And I take this, I leave the lid off, I put it on the smoker, I allow it to smoke up all that smoke for hours on end, and it just makes the best beans. But also the other amazing thing is with this being cast iron, every time I fry, every time I do an order of beans, every time I do anything with this, it accumulates and starts to build all that flavor on the inside. And anyone who's ever used cast iron, you'll know, cast iron lasts forever. If you find a pan, you look on eBay, pull one up right now, you'll find old cast iron skillets that are, you know, 60, 70, 80, 100 years old, and they're going for mint amount of money. The reason is, is it gets all that seasoning, all that flavor, all those years of all those different types of cooks, it all flavors that pan. And it's not something you can ever replicate unless it's been around for 100 years. And that's one of those cool things that in a kitchen some people don't think of. Um, I've known family members that have fought over the old cast iron that you know, grandparents, great grandparents, when they passed away had left because they wanted to continue that. And I've seen some of them left in wills. So that'll tell you anything you need to know about cast iron. Dutch ovens, uh, amazing investment. It's just incredible. So moving on past the Dutch ovens, we are going to get to a really good set of pans. I'm gonna come out and tell you right now, I have a good set of pans. I do not have a great set of pans. Um, I have been looking at Sur La Table recently for a set of Demonier or Scan pans. Uh, I'm not quite sure what I wanna go with yet. Uh, the Demonier's are really heavy duty, really high end cast iron, but I've been, or I'm sorry, uh, just stainless. But I don't know if I want to go with the Scan pan, which is the nonstick or I might buy a set of Demonier's. They're about $1,600 a set, so they are not cheap. They are extremely expensive, but it'll be the last set of pans that I ever buy. So if I buy one of those sets, it's gonna be a long time. I could invest in a couple scan pans where they're just uh, non-stick. So like a few of those is such for an omelet pan. They are really heavy duty. Uh, the ones that I have are Cathlon tri -Pi Stainless Steel. I've had these, um, let's see. 10, 11 years, somewhere in that area. Uh, they've worked really well. You can see they get a lot of use. They've cleaned pretty well. They've held up a lot of tests of time. They're not light, but they're not real heavy, good stainless. So I want that bigger, heavier duty. It allows you to get that sear, allows you to get everything a little bit better. There's nothing I can't do in these pans. And honestly, if this is what you can afford, uh, Bed Bath & Beyond has sets like these, the tri -Pies, the the D5s, the D7s. I think they run anywhere from three to $700 and they also have 20% off. I think 700 is the most expensive set that Bed Bath & Beyond carries, but even then you're spending 500 bucks after your 20% off, it's like 560, something like that. But invest in the most expensive set you can, because when you get a really good set, they're gonna last you a really long time and you're gonna be able to do everything you could ever imagine on those. So moving on to my last one, number one. Number one is, <laughs> I get people to laugh at me because these are my babies. Um, for the longest time that I've ever been in a kitchen, I have wanted a set of knives. I've wanted a good set of knives, and I've started building a good set, and I'm going to start building a great set here shortly. My good set, I am using a Shun. Shun knives, these things are incredibly razor sharp. They have lifetime warranties against anything that the manufacturer could have done. They're Damascus steel. This is an 8-inch chef knife. This thing is phenomenal. My favorite knife that I actually have in my kitchen though is easily, that's this baby. Uh, this one here is my Kiritsuki knife. This is an eight inch, a little bit bigger than what you would traditionally need. Uh, in the next video, we're gonna go really in depth over these knives. We're gonna show you what you need, techniques, grips, which is something that you get people that do this all the time. That's gonna be a big no-no. But this one here is phenomenal, super insanely sharp. I keep it honed. Uh, it's actually due for a sharpening here shortly, but I have been cutting stuff like crazy and it's one quick motion. You want to get a set that you're going to invest in because these, if I wanted to keep the classics, these are the Shun classics, I would be able to keep this set for the rest of my life. Like I can keep this sharp. Uh, there's a few other little ones that I like, a uh, little higher end Damascus that I've kind of fell in love with. And I mean, you can buy different sets. I have a meat cleaver on the way already. I have my vegetable cleaver. Um, this thing is so sharp and so heavy. I don't know if you can hear, like this thing is solid. 
If you put this on a squash, the weight of the blade down through it will cut straight through it. That's how sharp these things are. Um, you definitely want to keep these, if you're going to build a set of these, you have kids around, you want to keep these far away from kids reach because these things will take off fingers, everything in a heartbeat. But the safest way to be in a kitchen is having super sharp knives. Um, I went to cut an onion the other day. I have an old set. I'll show you. This is the difference. Okay. I have an old knife that I have used for a very, very long time. This is a saboteur. This is a, a knife that you can get at Bed Bath & Beyond for 20 bucks. It's not a terrible knife. It doesn't have much bend to it. So you'll be able to see this. There's no give to it. If I had my shun, not much bend, a little bit. This is a thinner steel, much better steel. This thing is now, even though I've done it through the sharpener, is pretty much trash. I went to cut just an onion the other day. I went to come down through it. It didn't want to cut. It would literally just take and pull it across. That's the fastest way for me to get hurt and injured in my kitchen. If I have this knife and I'm not able to cut, I'm done. Like, imagine just slipping. You can be as safe as you want. You can have your grip. But if this knife slips, it's still going to cut you. It's just, it's not going to be pretty because you're putting all that force down through your hand. This knife here, I can go down through, one cut, straight through, no resistance, and I'm being a lot safer in the kitchen. That's where the most kitchen injuries happen, and that's why I have this at number one. This is These are definitely one thing you can buy one time, be done with them for the rest of your life. So if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that about our top 10 list, or something you feel that I omitted, go ahead and leave it down in the comments. We're going to sit, and I'll read through all of them. I'll make sure I respond to as many as I can. So thank you for tuning in to the first episode of Feast or Famine Cooking. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. I hope we can do a lot of these videos. Anything that you want to see cooked, anything that you want to see done in a kitchen, put on there. If I don't know how to do it, I'll study, I'll learn, I'll, I'll figure out how to do it, and we'll put a video out. We'll make sure that everybody can learn anything they want to learn. Also, you know, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit that little notification bell. That way you're going to know when I upload videos. We've already shot... Uh, counting tonight, I think we're about nine, ten videos in. So we are going to be putting out some content here shortly. We got nine videos. We got uh, homemade spaghetti sauce coming up. I've got fish and chips coming up. Authentic fish and chips. We're not messing with the cheap stuff. So I hope you guys stay tuned. Look forward to the next videos. And guys, be safe. Cook some great food in the kitchen. We'll see you next time.